So I turn the blind eye. When I love you, I turn the blind eye. And it's it's not good. It's not good when I do that. But I have to do that. Because I can never pull you aside and go, hey, man, you shouldn't be smoking pot the amounts that you do. Hey, man, you shouldn't be doing coke in the amounts you do. Hey, man, you shouldn't be doing pills. There's not a lot of things I could pull you over for, pull you aside for and say, hey, I'm your friend. I'm worried about you. I think you should give this a breather. It's never been one of my uh, best traits. That's not my best trait. Yes, I have taken people aside that I care for and talk to them, you know, if something, like now is the time to talk to Kate. But before this, I didn't see it in my heart. I had heard, you know, what you guys don't understand is when I have a friend and I hear stuff about him, sometimes I confront them, knowing them, like if I really, really know them that well, but sometimes I can't confront them because I know that they'll never talk to me again. I had a dear friend who was on the podcast maybe three or four times. I had heard some rumors around about him. One day I pulled him aside and I just asked him a simple question. I said, hey man, I heard some stuff, you know, take it easy with the nose candy. It's been about three years we haven't spoken just from saying that to somebody, just because you care, you know. So I've learned my lesson the hard way. I know I know that I had dear friends that came up to me when I was in my dilemma, getting high seven days a week, and they would pull me aside and say something. And it was a 50-50 whether I talked to them again or not. You know, something it's something about people's addiction, something about people's problems, that unless they bring them up to you, you don't want to pull them aside and go, hey, man, I heard you got high in Pittsburgh. That's not, that has nothing to do with me. And I had, it happened to two people. And I think now I have a problem. I think now I have to change my friendship ways because I turned a blind eye to Ralphie May. I heard all about the pills and all that shit, but I never questioned him on it because I knew if I questioned him on it, he wouldn't be my friend for much longer. Some people are like that. I don't know why. I'm sure he wouldn't have talked to me for like three or four months and then we would have spoken again, but nothing would have been brought up. So that's why I didn't bring it up. But with uh, with Kate, I never brought it up. We spoke a couple weeks ago about it. She told me that, you know, she just gets high here and there. So I didn't think it was really a problem. When I got the call, I was at a blues jazz thing like a blues uh cookout there was food trucks it was really cute it was really fucking set up great yesterday i took mercy to the movies and then me and my wife hooked up we hooked up with the neighbors for a while we bullshitted with them and then at about uh five we went over to this thing you know my wife doesn't cook on saturday nights i was like don't cook tonight let's just fucking go out and uh you know watch the game and uh, i'll go to the blues thing and eat out there, and then I took the girls there first, and while I was waiting online for the barbecue, the phone rang. It was uh, Ryan Sickler. And I go, Ryan, can I call you back? And he's like, Joey, you have to hear this. And he told me he just got the call that two of the guys were with Kate, and uh, you know they did coke, and she's in critical condition, and I just like dropped the fucking brisket sandwich, you know? I got on the call. I got on the phone to whoever I could call, and I uh, I made like ten calls before I got to anybody. And I finally got my man Diagostino, and uh, he's dear friends with one of the guys that passed. My heart goes out to Diagostino and uh, Rico's family in Boston. You know, it hasn't been released yet. I'm telling you guys because I knew Rico. He was a very sweet kid, you know. And uh, Fu, the other kid that had died was also a very sweet kid. I got to be honest with you. I know Rico had demons, but I didn't know food did coke or anything like this. This is how, listen, guys, I am so out of that. I am so, I am 26,000 degrees from cocaine. I don't know who does it. I don't know who doesn't do it. You know, I heard at the store that there was a big cocaine problem. And this is between us. I, 
I never saw it. If you want me to fucking, when I was doing it, yeah, there was a fucking problem. I was snorting half the fucking snowstorm. I was half the fucking blizzard. I would go walk in the halls and you hear like a fucking blizzard. Yeah, when I was there, I was doing coke and I knew the people were doing coke. But once I stopped doing it, I'm so removed from that world. that I didn't even know who the fuck was doing it. And when they told me that there was a cocaine underworld there at night, Kate Quigley's name never came up. So I was like, okay, we don't have a fucking problem here. You know, once they start talking about you at the comedy clubs, that's where it gets bad. Trust me. I was one of those people that they started talking about. You know, there was a couple club owners that said little things about me, and I wasn't getting high at the club. I was just getting high in my room. But you could tell when you look, when you walk in to do a show at 8 o'clock and you look like you got hit by two cars, you know, they know that you're up to fucking something. So I don't know what the fuck to say, guys. I uh, I know you guys are looking to me to do a reaction on this. I have no reaction. My heart goes out to her. Like I told her agent who called me last night, I don't know. I don't want them to reach out to her mom. She mentioned it last week, and uh, she's mentioned it to me various times that her mom's a little sick, you know, so I don't want to push the mom over the top. Obviously, you guys saw that she answered back Red Band on Twitter, so uh, Red Band tweeted her, and she, uh, or text her. Red Band text her. Red Band was one of the concerned ones. Ryan Sickler was very concerned. D'Agostino was concerned. Lee was concerned, you know. The thing I didn't understand the most about this was whoever spoke to TMZ, they threw Hootie in all this. You know, why would you throw Hootie in all this? I can't imagine what he must feel like right now. Hootie had nothing to do with this. They hadn't been seeing each other in months. Why would you mention Hootie? And then on the bottom of the TMZ article, it said that she was knee-deep in the Hollywood scene with Jeff Ross, Donnell Rawlings, myself, and some other fucking names. I, what was that there for? To make me fucking feel bad? To make Donnell feel bad? I mean, what was that there for? I, 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 I didn't get what that was there for. It threw me for a loop and it put a tear in my eye. I was like, I hope people don't associate me with fucking cocaine. I had enough problems with it. It's been 14 years since I even held that shit in my fucking hand. So I hope people haven't put me with this. I'm in fucking New Jersey for people who don't know. And this went down in California. So I have no fucking idea of what's what, guys. So before you even go there and start saying, Joey, you're good friends with her. I am dear friends with her, but I have no fucking idea. You know, what's going on? I don't talk to her on a weekly, you know. And when I do talk to Kate and I say to her, what'd you do last night? And she goes, I did a spot at Nova. I did a spot at the Ha Ha. I don't ask if she snorted coke last night. That's got nothing to fucking do with me. You know what I'm saying? That's got nothing to do with Uncle Joey. I, I, I'm i saying prayers for her. I hope that, uh, I hope that she gets out of this okay. I'm going to call an attorney uh, when I finish the podcast today. I'm going to make a few calls tonight. You know, once the holiday, I don't think fucking it's a holiday. Nobody's working. I'm going to call an attorney and uh, just to see, you know, I have an attorney friend here. I'm going to call in a little while and just talk to him and see if she's going to be in any trouble. If she needs an attorney for, uh, you know, when they sit her down around the cops, I don't want her to say anything that's going to get her in fucking trouble, you know. And uh, that's the next step. I'm going to just talk to her when she's ready to talk to me. And no judgment. I'm going to try to help her out as much as I can. You know, I'm going to try to see if she wants to move back here with us for a month or two just to get a family's love. And I'm going to turn around to better help. That's the, the least, you know, that's the least I could do. Real quick.